Today I'm really excited because we're going to be talking about the 48 hour film project and I'm going to share tips on how I won four best picture awards and a best director award right here in Little Rock. We're going to do that right now. Hey guys, I'm Johnny with Johnny Brennan Filmwork. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and the like, and that way you can keep up with all the fun stuff, whether it be tutorials on filmmaking, acting, vlogs, or anything in between. So what is the 48 Hour Film Project? The 48 Hour Film Project is a global competition, and basically you have 48 hours to make a film. You have a team leader go to the kickoff area, and that team leader will draw a genre. Either be horror, could be drama, could be comedy. Back when I was participating, they also had a thing called wild cards. And the wild cards were off genres that was a little bit more challenging. And we always chose wild cards. So kickoff usually starts at 6 p.m. So after you get your genre and your elements, and every filmmaker has to put these elements in their film. Elements usually include a character and like a type of occupation, a lot of dialogue, and a prop. And every filmmaker has to incorporate that into their film regardless of genre. So it's pretty much an even playing field. And then you have to make this film and have it turned in by Sunday night at 6 p.m. so that you can qualify for awards. My first 48 hour film here in Little Rock was back in 2010. It was a film called RAR. It was directed by Matt Owen and Matt had already done a couple of 48 hour films. And since then I've worked on nine 48 hour films. Earlier this year when I made a video about how you can get connected to your film scene, I spoke a little bit about the 48 hour film project. Now I often tell people if you're interested in dipping your toes into filmmaking, this is the perfect place to start. I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing teams over the years and even though I can't share every experience, I can share that I've won Best Picture on four different occasions. Twice as an actor and twice as a director. I've also won Best Director and I've also had films nominated for Best Picture on six different occasions. If you're interested in watching my 48 hour films, I will share my playlist down below. So I thought I would share 10 tips that could help you in your process of making a successful 48 hour film. Now let's start with number 10, get a producer. You're gonna to wanna to find someone who is very well organized, someone who's gonna take care of all your paperwork, someone who's gonna be one step ahead of the process. That way, if there's any type of situations, they're the ones who can handle it. And that way, if you're a director, you can focus on directing and everybody else can focus on their parts of the film. A producer is a must, so be sure to have a producer before you even start. Number nine, do not pre-write a script. Now this kind of goes against the whole 48 hour thing. And I've heard of teams here in the Little Rock area that have pre-written scripts. They've been pretty adamant about it on Facebook. I remember one year a team said they had written 10 different scripts for 10 different genres. And I'm just like, why? I mean, it takes all the fun out of it. The cool thing and the most important thing about the 40 hour film project is how creative you can be in 48 hours. And it's possible that the 48 hour film project, if they get wind of this, they may disqualify you. So don't do it. Number eight, designate a screenwriter. So when you get together and everybody's pitching ideas to each other, if you have a large team or they have a small team, have someone there take notes. Then once you guys start locking down an idea, then that person can take all those notes and start writing a screenplay. So then everybody can go home and go to bed, get some sleep, and they can stay up just a little bit longer and hammer out a script. You also wanna make sure that your screenwriter has written a script that's no longer than the amount of minutes that your film is supposed to be. So if your film can only be eight minutes long, you wanna make sure that you write a six or seven page script. Keep it short. And that way, if the editor has to look at the script, it's all right there. Number seven, cast actors. I know it's the 48 and everybody wants to cast their best friend and their best friend wants to act and they're like, oh yeah, we'll make a movie together. Well, sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't. So the importance of casting actors is that usually they come very prepared and they can memorize a script very fast. All the actors that I've cast in my 48 hour films, they've all came prepared with guns blazing. As a matter of fact, in 2013, when I directed La Grande Fête, Karen Clark, who's a local actress here in Little Rock, had uh, made her film debut and she ended up winning Best, Best Actress. And then in 2016, my cast won Best Ensemble. And they're all actors who stay busy, whether it be theater or film here in Little Rock. Having good actors who are prepared makes it easier on the director. I can promise you that right now. Another tip would be to have actors on standby. That way, in case you need extra actors or more people, then you can call them up and say, hey, we can definitely use you. But definitely cast experienced actors. Ah, sorry, the fan came back on. Number six, have an experienced crew. 
Now when I say experience, I'm talking like someone who knows their way around a camera, someone who knows how to edit, someone who knows how to run sound. Sound is so important. If you got a DP who knows how to set up a shot composition correctly, that's what you want. And an editor, you want someone who knows how to cut correctly and put your story together in a very creative way. Number five, simplify your location. So in my case, I would always find a place, well, I'd always look for a house, maybe an office location, maybe a church, maybe a park, like some place that's kind of opened up. You definitely want to find a place where you can control your sound and that way you won't have any type of issues of your sound when you're starting to cut everything together. In our film, The Adventures of Betty Bernard, we shot that in a church. We had an office location, they had a green screen area that we shot a commercial. We also shot a commercial outside about shoes and they actually had a cafe in that church so we had that area as well. The last film that I made for the 48 was the Unbeatable Big Speed, and we shot that in my girlfriend's apartment building. And like Betty Bernard, there was a lot of different locations we shot at. So definitely keep your locations simple. And like I said, if you ever have any problems with your locations, that's where your producer comes in. Always have a backup plan. Always have a plan B when plan A falls through. Number four, wrap by five. But the later you shoot, the harder it is for the editor to get started on their job. That way, it gives everybody time to kind of relax and refresh a little bit, gives you time to rest before your editor starts editing. You might want to look at footage and just kind of see how things are going and maybe start putting some things together. But most importantly, you want to decompress just a little bit before you start on the editing process. And you want to make sure that they have no problems whatsoever once they start cutting that film. Three, edit overnight. Once you're done shooting all day long and everybody's kind of relaxed and resting, um, have your editor start cutting overnight. The first year that we had an editor, that cut all night, we won Best Picture, and that was for the Grand Fet. I think it's really important to have a really good editor, and I've been very fortunate to have excellent editors on my films. Number two, be sure to view your film before you turn it in. It's usually 6, 6.30, sometimes it's 7, 7.30. It just depends on your city of when you have to turn your film in, but be sure to have plenty of time to watch that thing over and over and over. Back in 2013, when we did La Grand Fete, we were finished by 11 or 12 that afternoon, and we watched it four or 500 times before we turned it in that night. When we made Betty Bernard, I was literally running into the theater to make sure I had that flash drive and all my paperwork uh, dropped off by that time, and I think I had like three minutes to spare, so it was a close call. And like I said, in 2011, my directorial debut, we were late. And the reason why we were late was because we didn't format our flash drive in our Mac. And we couldn't load the film onto the flash drive, so yeah. Number one, the number one most important thing you should do when you're making your 48 hour film is to have fun. Making a movie is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful, even though it can be. But the most important thing is to have fun. Be creative with your genre. If you draw a family, do something different. In 2011, when we did The Ashes, we made our family film a dark comedy. In 2012, whenever we made La Petite Mort with my friend Matt Owen as director, we took horror and we made it a musical. In 2019, when we made The Unbeatable Big Speed, we took politics and we made it about a man who's running for HOA president against a dog. But do something different. If you draw horror, make a musical, make a comedy, make a horror comedy. I don't think they have wild cards anymore, but every year that we did 48, we did a wild card. And it was so much fun. So in 2013, we had comedy, but we put that genre back and we drew operetta. Now that year was the only year that Little Rock did operetta. They haven't done it since. So operetta meant that your cast had to sing the dialogue. It wasn't really a musical, but it, it might as well be a musical and it was nuts, but we did it. So the teams that I put together with Flocati Films or Motherboard Entertainment, we knew that we were gonna have fun. We were gonna laugh. We were gonna have a great time. We were not gonna take it serious. We weren't in it to win it. We just wanted to make a film that people would, would wanna see at least twice. And just being loose and relaxed and just having fun with it, I mean, we won a lot of awards with it. And I'm very fortunate to have um, been a part of that. So those are the 10 tips that has helped me win four Best Pictures, one Best Director, and a number of Best Picture nominations, as well as another, uh, a number of awards that went to several of my friends and cast and crew. And I tell you, if you're gonna put a team together, 
put people together that you know are talented, that are fun, that will help you be a better director. You know, I mean, I had friends that were constantly sharing ideas and in the middle, I mean, we'd have scripts and we'd try stuff, you know, like let's just start these lines and come up with something else. Just have fun with your 48 hour film and don't take it serious. And if you do make a good film, submit it to film festivals, you know? I mean, several of my films have won awards at several film festivals that were 48 hour films. So definitely don't let your film die there. Get it out, put it here on YouTube and all that good stuff. Thank you guys for stopping by. That's, uh, that's my tips for the 40 hour film project. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it and like. You can always hit the likes too. And that way you can keep up with tutorials on, like I said, filmmaking, acting, and, uh, and I do vlogs every once in a while. So, so I'll be sharing more with you. So until then, we'll see you soon.